All right, well, I'm in Tuscarora State Forest here in uh, Perry County, Pennsylvania. And in the previous video, we were exploring the Coconachig Mountain Railroad Tunnel. And I'm currently in between exploring the North Portal and the South Portal. Um, but I thought I'd come check out this area as well. This is, this is near the North Portal, north, near the North Portal of that tunnel. Um, so like when I come out exploring these places, because this is a pretty far drive, I try to find other places in the area to explore as well, to go hiking. So I saw this on the map, Hemlocks Natural Area. So I thought I'd do some hiking here as well. And here's a sign for Hemlocks Natural Area, 120 acre tract of virgin timber untouched by the hands of man. I got, they actually got a nice little map here. Yeah, we're parked all the way down here. So I think I'm gonna take this Patterson Trail, hike up the Rim Trail, it's called, and then you can kind of do a little bit of a loop here, come back on the Hemlock Trail. But I guess I'll be walking back on the road, maybe. We'll see, or maybe I'll take this way back. We'll see what happens. We'll see what it's like. All these like trying to find old growth forest areas for these virgin timbers, the big trees. We'll see what it's like. It's, this is April 10th. As you can see, there's some snow on the ground. Um, earlier, I was on the north side of the mountain. There was a lot of snow over there. Well, not a lot, but it was covering the ground. Here, it's just kind of splotchy. But anyway, I'm gonna check this place out, see what it's like, and uh, as always, I'll take you along with me. So let's get hiking. Yeah, so once again, I should probably mention where I'm at. I keep forgetting to tell you where I'm at. This is called Hemlock road and uh, like i said i'm in tuscarora state forest here in perry county pennsylvania and it's right off of route 274 um right near the big spring picnic area and you follow hemlock road take a sharp turn come around the mountain you'll eventually find this area about a mile or so down the road that's where i am and then right by the parking area here that's where i parked the truck obviously and then just off here is the start of the patterson run trail of course that'll take you to the Rim Trail and the Hemlock Trail, so we're gonna hike all those. So away we go. Yeah, I'm starting to see some larger trees out here. I mean, we're not, I don't think we're in the place where the big, big ones are, but this one's, you know, not super big, but well, it's decently, it's a nice sized tree. Hopefully there are some bigger ones up here. Yeah, a lot more snow along this section of the trail underneath these hemlock trees. Doesn't quite feel like spring under here, but it is. And we're gonna continue on the, the rim trail this way. But I think I'm gonna take a break here first. I forgot to eat, uh, what do you call it? I forgot to eat breakfast this morning. I was driving up here this, today. I was wondering why I was so hungry and I realized I didn't eat anything. So, I can stop here and eat for a little bit. Keep on going then. Well, when I first came out here this morning, I was I was a bit discouraged because of the snow. You know, it's been a long winter. We keep getting this is like I don't know, I don't know how many times it snowed in April here already. Um, seems like we got more snow in March and April than we did the rest of the real winter. So, but now that I've been sitting out here for a while, though, it does. I'm sitting here in the sun, warming up. I can visibly watch the, the snow melt, actually. And I'm hearing the birds are singing their little springtime songs. And so spring is here. You know, the snow is trying to 
covered up, I guess, but it is here, so kind of feels nice right here at this spot. All right, we keep going along the rim trail here. This should take us to the uh, the hemlock trail, which is probably where the the big hemlocks are. A lot of them might be dead, actually, because Pennsylvania is struggling with this beetle called the woolly adelgid beetle that's killing a lot of our hemlock trees. So we'll see. We'll see how that looks. Well, I'm still on the rim trail, but I want to stop here and show you. See all those dead trees out there. Those are all hemlock trees. You kind of see how there's one. That's what I was afraid of out here, that most of these hemlock trees would be dead. There are some living ones out there yet. Actually standing underneath one that's still alive, a couple. But yeah, those ones out there are all dead. Plus some crows out there, or ravens maybe. I guess you can't see them anymore. But yeah, so we'll see. Maybe there's still some cool trees out here yet. Hopefully there is. Hopefully they're not all dead. But yeah, it's the way it is. We'll talk more about that woolly adelgid beetle later though. Let's keep on going. All right, so I'm at the junction with the rim trail and the hemlock trail. Rim trail continues on up that way, the hemlock trail on that way, but they do they do meet up further up. So I think I'm just going to follow the stay on the rim trail and come back on the hemlock trail, and then maybe to this spot nearby, and then maybe take the road back the rest of the way. We'll see. But up here is here's an example of a nice living hemlock tree should look like the one with the needles on it up there. That's what they should look like. But here's one that's, here's another one that's dead. Right there. Living one, dead one. Lots of dead ones out there. It's a shame, all those stubs of trees, those are giant hemlock trees that are dead. A few are still alive over here. Huh. So it's still, you know, it's still hemlock's natural area, but it's been uh, hit pretty bad. But where there's death, there's always life though as well. So all these down here, these are all young hemlocks. All the, all the adult ones are dead, but these young ones are growing up now. So, you know, the hemlock tree isn't gonna disappear from Pennsylvania. The young ones are coming up. You know, maybe in time they'll get hit too, but you know, they keep regrowing. So, there's always hope. But there are still some giants out here that still are alive. For how long, I don't know. This is probably the biggest one I've seen so far today. It's still alive. Let me get up next to it here. Decent sized tree there. I know it doesn't compare to the trees on the west coast, but that's a decent sized tree for Pennsylvania. So here is a smaller hemlock tree. This is what they look like. And what the woolly adelgid beetle does, they're really tiny, I don't think there's any on here, but they, they attach themselves to the base of the needles and they suck the sap, the juice out of the tree. And over time, 
you know, that weakens the tree, you know, kills it because the sap is what gives the tree its life, pretty much. It's just like if you had, you know, hundreds of little bugs, you know, stuck in your blood all the time. You know, you wouldn't die right away. You know, you'd weaken over time and eventually die. That's what's happening to these hemlock trees. Um, I forget, the woolly adelgid, it's an invasive species. It's not native to Pennsylvania. Um, invasive species are a real problem for forests and even agriculture. Like different examples in Pennsylvania would be like the gypsy moth is one, the Japanese beetle, those brown stink bugs. Um, was it the emerald ash borer? Oh, the, the chestnut blight, that was a fungus that killed all the chestnut trees. And the newest one in Pennsylvania is a spotted lanternfly. You know, when a, new, when a new species that's not native to a region comes into a new area, it just tends to take over. It has no natural predators. You know, the, natu the native ecosystem is not, you know, prepared to handle it, I guess you could say. So it just wreaks havoc. It, 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 it upsets the balance of things, the whole predator-prey balance. And it just destroys, like what happened here in this hemlock forest. Um, over time, you know, the ecosystem can adapt. You know, um, I think, or like in the case of the woolly adelgid, there's, I think the woolly adelgid is found on the west coast as well, but there's a natural predator out there, some little black beetle that eats them. So I think they've brought that little beetle into Pennsylvania to try and curb its destruction. I think it's helping a little bit, so yeah. Invasive species are bad news. And this is a pretty little spot here. We're getting onto the hemlock trail here now. Oh, check this out. You can hear there's water flowing underneath the ground. I think you can hear that. That's pretty cool. This bridge is pretty nice as well. Going over the stream here. That's picture worthy. I'm on the other side of the stream now, walking along the hemlock trail. There are still some giants over here too, that are still alive. That's good. Um, one of the best examples of an invasive species and the destruction it can cause is, is what happened in Australia during the 1800s. Um, some Englishman, uh, I guess he had a ranch over there in Australia or something. I don't know what they call them. I don't know if they call them ranches over there, but uh, he missed hunting rabbits. There are no rabbits in Australia, but I guess he hunted rabbits in his native England. So he had some rabbits brought over, maybe like 12 or so. And he just set them loose on his ranch, hoping that they would reproduce, you know, and he could hunt rabbits. Well, they reproduced all right because, you know, if you know anything about rabbits, they produce a lot of babies um, because they get eaten a lot by many different predators. You know, here in Pennsylvania, everything eats rabbits, you know, foxes, coyotes, hawks, owls, everything. But in Australia, there is nothing that eats rabbits. There were no native predators to eat the rabbits. So they just produced like crazy and there's nothing to eat them and they just they just took over. And what's so bad about that is they, they eat the vegetation that the native inhabitants of Australia would eat, like the you know kangaroos and whatever else is out over there, all those unique creatures that are in Australia. And they were just eating the landscape, you know, barren. There's there's thousands of them just everywhere. And it was they were destroying the native ecosystems over there. And it became a real uh, issue. You know, they tried all kinds of stuff to get rid of them. They even built this huge fence across Australia to stop them. Well, that didn't work. I think they eventually found a virus that kills just rabbits, and they introduced that into the population, and it brought things under control. So invasive species can do, they can just wreak destruction on a new ecosystem. So yeah, got to be careful. Well, here's another example of how death can result in life. Here's a big old hemlock tree that fell at one point and is slowly rotting away. But you know, the wood rots back into soil. But even before the tree rots away, 
these are all little trees that are actually growing on this old tree. Here's here's other little baby hemlock trees. They're still they're growing right out of this old log. So it's slowly being decomposed and being used by other plants and stuff to grow on. So death turns back into life again. Nice little spot to sit. Got a little bench here. That's just down from that little uh, waterfall there. Oh man, I wonder if there's. I didn't bring my fishing rod, but I wonder if there's trout in here. I didn't get my fishing license yet, anyway. But interesting. Nice little spot. Alright, well I'm off the trail system obviously, but I'm going to hike the road back to where the truck is instead of taking the, all those trails again. The Rim Trail and the, whatever that other one was called, Patterson Run Trail. Those trails were a little rough. With the melting snow it got pretty slippy. I think I fell at least once. And uh, they're pretty, there's a lot of deadfall, a lot of branches down on the trails because it's a pretty windy winter so taking the road back would be a lot easier. So I'll see you back to the truck. Uh, we're back at the truck. Always oh, good to see the truck. That's still a long walk along the road there. But if you don't want to do as long as a walk, like here's this side, like I parked all the way down here and went all the way up. If you just want to park, apparently there's a, a parking area up here. If you just would do like a little loop trail around this area instead of, you know, hiking all that, you could do that as well. I kind of did the long. I kind of did the long way, but that's okay. All right, well, I'm going to go and finish another video I was working on, on the Kokonachig Mountain Tunnel. I got to finish that video. And then uh, I think I'll go down to, I'm going to go down to Colonel Denning State Park after this. So I'll see you somewhere around there, one of those places. So thanks for coming along.